now. Okay, hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode, another podcast, another YouTube video of Mental Matters. I am Kimberly, I'm with Psyche, and as usual, I am joined by the beautiful Kopano. Hi Kim, how are you? <laughs> Hi Kopano, I am good, thank you. How are you doing? That's good. You know, I mean, we just started a new semester, so I am open all the notifications, but it's because we are inside, we're ready, we're committed to this new semester, so I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think I'm just really excited that, like, now we kind of know what to expect with e-learning, so I'm hoping that this semester I will feel more on top of things. True. <laughs> But uh, let's not be rude. It's okay. You've got it. You've got it. <laughs> let's introduce our really awesome special guest today. Um, that's Miss Nkateko Ndala Mahora. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm just going to quickly introduce her. She has more than 10 ex years experience in the field of psychology, in corporate environments, in various organizations, in students' environments and cultures, where she has gained immeasurable insights into the dynamics of human behavior. As a registered therapist with a master's degree in counseling psychology, she is currently an academic at the University of Pretoria, where she is involved in teaching and research with undergraduate and postgraduate students. On top of that, she has produced numerous technical reports with numerous publications in academic journals in sub-Saharan Africa. And her most recent published work features an international academic resource which was published under Information Age Publishing at the University of Mexico. Again, we are in the presence of greatness. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. Um, Thank you for having me as I remove this beanie from my <laughs> <laughs> from the background. That's, how, that's what happens when you on the camera. So I'm to keep the camera off because um, I don't think the listener needs to see me. I'm introducing myself here. Yeah, I am um, uh, just hear me more than enough just to hear my voice. And my voice is just as wonderful as my face. We can't argue with the facts. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Definitely, Definitely, without a doubt. Like... <laughs> Uh, but I think before we get into our topic, as usual, uh, Ms. Ngatseko, what we've been asking all of our special guests is to start us off by just telling us, how are you feeling today? Where are you at? Um, I was actually sharing with one of my mentees that, um, who was asking, how am I? Uh, family the whole family is good they're intact actually i had to close the windows because they are in a very jovial mood and their voices will have come across and overtaken this whole session you will have most probably concentrated on their jovial um conversations over <laughs> there um, more than uh, my voice so i had to uh, do that just to 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 tone that down uh, to tone their mood down. I'm not sure what spiced their mood in the way they did, but as an individual, uh, not in such a good space, but I am also myself uh, in, uh, you know, just like anybody else, um, taking it step by step one day at a time. Mm. It's, we're, and, we're glad that even though you're, you're but you're taking it one step at a time. Also, before we go further, I just wanted to say Happy Women's Month to the beautiful ah! ladies that are with me. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> Happy Women's <laughs> Month to you too. And Happy also, uh, you. Uh, you know, discussing very important issues related mm -hmm. to women this month um, in our YouTube channel, especially relating to gender-based violence in the mm -hmm. context of COVID-19, because we COVID-19 has also highlighted the scourge um, of gender-based violence, especially in the first stages of the lockdown. Yeah. So happy 
Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think we'll just go straight into it, Kim, if you are okay with that. 100%. Um, we, I think, um, as you say, so we came into this lockdown. Um, last week, we found out that mental health sort of has COVID-19 increased or like decreased. Um, but one of the biggest like, you know, mental health problems that we have are a anxiety but sometimes you don't really know how to differentiate between just like worrying about something and actually being anxious about something so could you please you know just into us what counts and what is it between anxiety and just worrying about something um i mean be it worry be it sadness um, it, and just like with anything if something it become it comes in the way of you being productive you being um you know doing something well then we then say it's a mental health illness so i'm giving an example with sadness so you can be sad but not necessarily be depressed because the sadness is a feeling where you can still go with your day-to-day -day, um, activities, you can be able to still concentrate in your it's not severe. So it's about the severity of what is happening to you and how often is it occurring. So versus anxiety, it will be marked by, are you worrying all the time? It's uh, not necessarily just worrying about one dis um, uh, one instance so you will be worrying across things so you are worried about uh, the health you are worried about contracting coronavirus you are worrying about your exams you are worried about getting better you are worried about the sun you are worried about the economy so 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 then we say you are an anxious person that's when we will say that is anxiety and as I said also the frequency in which it happens so and also the intensity in which it happens that's the difference between the worry and the anxiety um how, what is it is it general is it in general it is it in one instance or is it in many instances so maybe if i'm thinking my children right now and i'm paranoid about their safety i across the board paranoid about a lot of things i'm paranoid about gems i'm paranoid about you know um people just looking at me, I'm paranoid about me getting into a car. So now we take it, it's across things instead of it in a specific, some days why am I worrying about the children's safety? Then it's across things. And as I said, the frequency in which it happens and then, then the, also the intensity it happens it will then give us that that differentiation that this is no longer just worrying in general but then it's an anxiety disorder sorry i forgot i've muted <laughs> if i can just ask uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Katseko, how do what what is actually happening to our body then when we are anxious you know I've, I've heard a lot of people speak about panic attacks as well what is actually happening physiologically to us when we undergo that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and one of the indicators and it's a good question that you are Kim. one of the indicators is that losing breath and you will hear a lot of people who are in a, a panic attack um so one Symptoms of anxiety it's not necessarily the anxiety itself it's what happens to you when you are anxious so other people it attacks them in that way um, and other people let's say if somebody has got OCD then they will have compulsions um, you know that then uh, you that they obsess be it washing of hands be it counting so those are different uh, symptoms that we see when people are anxious and we also have within the anxiety disorders we've got different anxieties so in a um, panic attack what usually people will explain a, a, an occurrence that feels like they are about to die so they lose their breath uh, their chest closes up they've got a lump on their throat as if air cannot pass as if it's very painful when air passes i had a, a client who was in hospital COVID 19 patient 
um, about two weeks ago and she was saying when she was breathing, it felt like there was something literally on her throat, but um, COVID-19 um, was very much mixed in with anxiety and that is why I had to consult with her while she was in hospital, obviously online because she's, you know, being isolated. Um, but anxiety, not necessarily by the positive result of being COVID uh, positive because the medication, but her anxiety got the better of her where she could not cope with the diagnosis very well. So those are some of the things that people will express. They will express things like, um, you know, sweat palms, um, a sweaty brow, you know, dilated pupils, acute hearing, highness of the mouth, um, you know, where a person feels like they are on, on some sort of very strong medication where their mouth is dry all the time and they need to drink. Um, and the shakes as well, you know, uh, heart pounding, uh, stomach almost like they are getting sick to the pit of their stomach, just the sickening feeling that they get. So those are some of the physiological uh, symptoms. And that is why whenever I give tips to people who are, who've got anxiety disorders, the first thing that I give as a tip, people take for granted uh, breathing. And I know I'm getting into tips of how to cope with this, but it's, it's fine. Uh, let's, let's let the conversation slide. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, flow nicely. So, so th those are some of the things that I will say to somebody who's anxious. I will say, we take for granted. We think that we are breathing while we actually just, um, let me just switch on my video so that I can just, uh, demonstrate what we usually do so we we usually in this mode most of the time we're not necessarily breathing and um you know i take my clients through breathing breathing exercise to demonstrate the proper breathing um in in helping them to um fill the bloodstream with oxygen because um we, you know, cortisol has got a place in our bodies. Um, it helps regulate the stress, but then in excess, it then um, works against us physiologically and uh, psychologically. It works against us when it's it's just too much in our bloodstream. And what that's what excessive uh, stressing and ex excessive anxiety, which normally people can cannot help and that is why we say it's a diagnosable um, pathology or disorder, a mental health disorder, um, because people sometimes they cannot help but be worried and be anxious um, until we give them those clues or we unpack what makes them to be anxious, such as now in the COVID context, we understand why people are worried. We will, that is why we're not judgmental to say, you know, get over it or why are you so anxious? We understand why people are anxious. So. Those are one of the one of that will help to uh, for for a person because what it does when we are in an, that an, anxious um, and when we having that anxiety attack, it's either a flee, a fight, or a freeze response. So we are in a way by taking in deep breath, we are fooling the brain in thinking that there is no harm, that the the threat is gone, and therefore we. God, we get back to the rational way of being. Oh, wow. Um, I think the like sort of thing in your brain is very interesting to me because, you know, oftentimes we neglect that we are. What happens? Okay, so now we are, we are in the second semester of our year. Well, UP is starting with the second semester of the year. Yeah, I remember this in way more trickier uh well i've found it to be in my little four years here to be um more challenging more stressful because of that, and now it's like even shorter um and we're already feeling overwhelmed how do we you know deal with this feeling of like being overwhelmed from like the get-go of this for sure and i think you have had me uh Kopano, earlier on when kim asked me how am i doing i said I'm not so great, but then I'm taking it day by day. I think that is the mistake that often people make in being overwhelmed by wanting to take it on or by thinking about everything 
acting all at the same time. And that makes the situation even worse. And by, by the way, it worsens it by this, and which, it, 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 you know, it's, um, it's a paradox. So now you are overwhelmed, you want to do everything or everything that you can get your hands to or your brain into or your eyes into or, you know, your body into. And then you are stressed more. What that does is it, de it immobilizes you, it paralyzes you. So in your paralysis, then you pause. In your paralysis, as you pause, what happens? Work does not go away. It piles up. What happens when you see that work is piling up? You panic more because work is not going away. But then by taking one step at a time, you make ticks and whatever you were not able to get to, you look at it, is it a priority? Is it not a priority? If it's not a priority, if it does not have a deadline, I will give an example yesterday. I had a couple of deadlines, but I did not get to all of them. Were they all priorities? No. Uh, Monday return with Kutura Psychologist was priority because it's got to be aired on a Monday. Before I focus on that, once I saw that it was already 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m., that's what I finished off with in exhaustion. And then, then I thought the other things, some things, are, the deadline is the fifth, which is in two days' time, how do I then balance that? I looked at today, to-do list, can, can I fit it in? Not with uh, uh, discussions like this. I was in super um, in feedback um, in the morning. I'm in another meeting later. And then, then the key need my attention. Most probably, it's not going to be done uh, today. But then, can I slot it in tomorrow? Sure, we can slot it in until the date deadline comes. So that's then you tackle uh, everything. You give them priorities. You give them. Um, according to your abilities, your strength, your energy levels, your energy also will do. Sometimes students will say, you know, I'm unable to write my dissertation, I'm unable to read, I'm unable to study. And I will say, I want you to read even if it's two paragraphs. Even if it is two paragraphs, accumulatively, it's going to be five pages by the time you finish at the end if you don't have energy, if you cannot get into it. But then there will be days where the two paragraphs is not two paragraphs because you've got energy. Maybe you have let go of, I'm not eating chocolate this week, I'm not eating chocolate this week, I'm not eating chocolate this week. And then you decide you're gonna eat it on Thursday and then you've got energy for days because you have given your soul what it wanted. And then you've got uh, energy and you might be able to cover the whole chapter on the day and use the energy of the day to be able to accomplish what you could not accomplish in the days where you were not motivated. So again, it's that whole thing. How do you eat an elephant? One bite size at a time. And actually it does work. You cannot take on everything at the same time, especially in an overwhelming situation in an overwhelming environment because it's just going to make you feel even more worthless to feel more unmotivated to feel you are doing something that is little towards just writing off that to-do list yo that is a hundred percent true like everything you just said i saw myself being myself, doing exactly what you're talking about <laughs> this semester. So I think I'll, I'll definitely try that in terms of the one, one paragraph, even if it's just one paragraph that day, that's fine. Um, but I, I just want to jump back a little bit to the strategies that you spoke about in terms of how we keep, um, how we keep the anxiety in check, you know, and how we ensure that we are not feeling overwhelmed. So you, you mentioned breathing, for instance. Can you tell us, you know, I did watch a YouTube um, video where you were speaking about this and I just found it so, so interesting. Uh, I realized basically I've been breathing wrong all my life. So could you please teach us and the mm. listeners how to breathe properly? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, uh, I was going to talk about the other tips, but then um, maybe let me finish with it. Um, let me finish with how do we do that. But I want to talk about other tips that can help us with anxiety. So we talked about 
taking things one step at a time. We talked about breathing. Uh, I also, as much as I'm a believer in doing, in, 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 in just being in a moment, and, and just rolling it's where you don't have strength and it's okay to let it go it's okay to write a paper and i'm saying this as your lecturer who wants 80 percent and 70 percent and 90 percent but sometimes it's okay to click submit on, on what you, it's a mediocre paper it is fine i'm not promoting a substandard or mediocre lifestyle not at all, or else I will not be where I am right now. But I'm saying that at times it is possible that circumstances are so far and beyond your control that you don't have strength left to be able to fight, to be able to fight for a, that distinction, to be able to fight to produce that paper. Sometimes it's okay to click submit. And by the way, you'll be surprised. I've got lots of clients where I say that and, you know, they want to cringe. They want to cry because this is not their standard. And some of them will come back and say, you remember that? Actually, you got four. You know, I thought it's a fail or it's like a 49 or a 48 or a 50. But I got, I surprised myself. So then if now you had put all of the effort together, you will have gotten in the 90s or in the high 80s. So sometimes it, it is okay um, to let it go. Sometimes things are out of your, our control. Things that are out of our control, we need to surrender them. We need to surrender them to God in prayer, in, 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 in recognizing that that are beyond us, that we cannot really um, be in control of. Things that we are in control of, as I said, you take them step by step. You do them little by little. Uh, you don't do all of them all at once. Um, people think that sleeping is relaxing. Sleeping is not relaxing. Uh, I am saying this on record. By the way, your brain works much more when you are sleeping than when you are not. It's consolidating everything that you have learned, everything that you have observed. That is why we dream, because it's making sense of things. So your, body, your brain is at the most active. Yes, your body is resting, it's dormant, but your brain is working extra hard. That is why we talk about relaxation techniques. And those relaxation techniques are different for different people. For other people, it might be escapism, and escapism, I'm not talking about toxic escapism or um, non-constructive con escapism such as taking illicit drugs or, you know, alcohol. That is a way of escaping, but not a harmful. So um, ways in which you can escape outside your adult life. If you think um, adulting is a trap, wait until you are right now. <laughs> you know, um, so... That, you know, escaping a little bit into the fantasy world that is safe, it's not infringing on any body's human, uh, human right, you know, be it serious binging, um, you know, for me, it was uh, decadent chocolate uh, brownies, and uh, my kids came to ask me and say, uh, where are the brownies? And I said, I shared them with your dad and I was lying. It was all me. So <laughs> that was, you know, <laughs> that was, um, so, so that is also, that is a, a form of escape. And I was also about to write <clears throat> on my st status, hello, I'm Kateko and my drug of choice is sugar. So those are some of the ways in which, as I said, as long as it's not, uh, excuse me. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> sorry about that. <coughs> As long as it's not infringing on somebody's human right, um, it's fine to switch off like that. Uh, walks are wonderful. Exercising, it's something that is wonderful. Yes, I know it is hard for most people. You know, it's daunting for most people to say, where do I even start? Once you start, you know the benefits of it. And you feel so good because firstly, in exercising, you're not only putting in post body, but you're also release, releasing endorphins. Remember we talked about cortisol, which is a stress hormone. 
here the endorphins are feel-good hormones. It's the same as those four um, slabs of uh, uh, brownie, that heavy uh, three chocolate uh, decadent uh, brownie. It's more or less just the same. Um, obviously, it takes effort, but then that effort is also contributing to your well-being as well. Um, and then spend time with uh, loving and supportive towards you. Not spending time with toxic uh, people, but spending time with a support system. Be it that video call, that um, CV chat, um, you know, looking at jokes or watching comedy, reading that um, you have a book that you've been putting on the shelf because, you know, you're looking at the academics and you are pushing assignments and stuff. But hey, there's a feel good or a light book that you've been putting on the shelf. Take it and let it take you somewhere. That's also one form of escapism. It's, it's by reading because then you just create this whole story and you create your own characters in terms of how they look like, what they uh, speak and, you know, what kind of um, living uh, do they live. So it's, it's also one of those um, that you can, you can, some of the tips that I can share with you before then I demonstrate the relaxation techniques. So I'm going to just take a sip of water and then to the camera. Okay. So in terms of, as I already mentioned earlier on, is that most people do not breathe properly. Um, so you need to and um, take in enough air that it will be able to last you as you exhale out slowly to the count of zero. We breathe in through your nose and then you hold for three and out and to a count of six. So I'm going to be counting as you do it. Breathe in through your nose. One, two, three, and hold, and then out. One, two, three, four, five, six. So for you to know that you have taken enough breath, you should be able to, power to hold your breathing out throughout. So in again, in through your nose. One, two, three, and out through your mouth. One, two, three, four, five, five, six. Yes, so do not be running out of breath. And then also what you do, and you'll find that sometimes it happens automatically, but you can also drop your shoulders and you will see that it makes you feel quite relaxed by dropping your shoulders down and feeling warmth of in through your nose and out through your mouth one two three four five six and you don't even need to wait for moments like this where you have time and you are sitting down and you are looking at yourself in the mirror or anything like that. You can even be doing it while standing in a queue, uh, while you are, you know, on a hard phone call. You know, some phone calls are not easy phone calls. And maybe I'm speaking for myself because uh, that is one of the things that I hate the most. It's a phone call. <laughs> you know, uh, um, so making something to eat and, and so on. So you can be practicing to breathe so that it becomes part of your lifestyle to, to breathe uh, deeply. Wow. Um, I feel more relaxed already. I love it. Um, <laughs> uh, so I just wanted to a little diverge, you know, of our conversation and just ask, what happens because you spoke about um the people that surround us so surrounding yourself with positive people people that are not toxic for you if let's say you your parents don't you know understand the concept of anxiety um i know especially people of color uh, 
Um, health is still of a uh, murky waters, you know, people don't necessarily understand. And people's parents, most importantly, don't understand. So, you know, if you were at res, you would know, like, okay, this is how I handle my anxiety. This is what I do. This is what I do. Or, you know, in, for example, Pretoria. But now that you're home and you're schooling from home, it's a whole complete, you know, different situation where it's like, okay, now I'm trying to handle being at home and also school. And also now sort of explaining or like get my parents to understand what it means when I'm anxious. How do you sort of navigate that? Sure. And it is hard, especially when you're saying, you know, you tell them and you're being judged or you are afraid to tell them because you're afraid to be judged, which uh, I will not tell in such an environment because because it will make you feel worse, you know, be it with friends or family or, you know, somebody that you think you trust. Uh, I will not tell where you are not supported fully. Um, as UP students, you're, you are also, your, your, your student support is open fully and there are psychologists that are available for you online, such as what we're doing right now with video conferencing or voice um, on a telephone or WhatsApp, you know, so there, there is help out there for you. So you don't need to be speaking to people who are immediately with you. Although, yes, it would have been fantastic to be supported by them because they're with, the, with you more that you'll be talking to over the phone or over um, WhatsApp or Blackboard uh, collaborate and so on. So what I'm saying is that help is there. Uh, UP students functional, it's open, you can make an appointment and you will be seen by um, a psychologist. Well, thank you so much, um, ma'am. I think that was a brilliant question, um, Kopano. And, you know, I, I think like you said, ma'am, it would be great if our immediate support uh, systems could be on board and, and we could feel safe enough to share all of those things. But like you said, sometimes we, we have to deal with the reality of the situation we're in and, and try to make the best of it. So I think you, you really brought up a really good point there. Uh, just for the sake of time, I think we're going to have to cut it here, but we really are looking forward to having you uh, back um, on this platform with us on mental matters, possibly on a different topic uh, where we can also s explore the mental health related issues in that aspect. Let me just check in with Kopano. Kopano, do you have any questions that we can quickly ask um, Ms. Ndala, Ndala Mahoro? Okay, thank you. Sorry, I think my network cut out there. That's fine. Um, but I think, yeah, on behalf of myself... No, I'm a human now, a little baby, so I'm good. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, no, that's perfect. Ma'am, thank you so much for joining us. We are so, so appreciative of everything that you've taught us today, everything that you've answered in terms of our questions um and like i'm saying we're just really looking forward to having you back on and yeah i think from me from kim psyche thank you so much and kopano tax fm from kopano from tax fm <laughs> thank you. thanks for joining us thank you so much episode of mental matters and yeah we'll see you guys next week thank you ma'am Yep.